Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Are you bored at home? <laughs> or knowing everybody's staying at home, not going anywhere, right? So I thought I'd just do a little demonstration here this afternoon. I was um, looking at um, my phone and um, one of my friends in Minnesota um, showed me a picture, a great photo, and I thought, I got to paint this thing. So <laughs> I'm going to be painting this beautiful scene. Let me show you the scene that we're painting. Actually, um, where is it? It's right up there. See it up here? It's this great scene right here. We're going to be doing a great shot up north, way up north, up near Duluth. And so we're going to be doing this um, shot right here. And um, so this is just an <laughs> impromptu um, demo I'm going to do. Um, it's going to be uh, just, I think I was bored this evening. <laughs> so I was just wanted to do a little painting. I thought, why not show you guys too at the same time? It's going to be a, um, a sunset scene, so we're going to go in there and um, do a great job. And actually, I'd normally do, I just let you know that I normally do my um, videos on Thursday. Next week, I'm doing it on Wednesday because it's New Year's Eve um, on the Thursday. And, um, and the, I usually do them on, not on Facebook, which I'm doing today at night because more people are here <laughs> during the day. And so um, usually I do them on YouTube. So go to my YouTube channel. Um, just type in David R. Becker. I think there's somewhere you'll find it. Or Becker Art. Becker Art or David R. Becker. You can see it on YouTube. Or go to my website. On my website, I have everything. And actually, here's my website address. So anybody wants to see uh, my website, where's my website? Well, here's my website. So go to beckerart.net or davidrbecker.com. And you can um, find out when I'm what I'm painting or what I'm selling or where my classes are. And everything's on here. And I also do it um, for all those that are normally on YouTube, they don't see this stuff on Facebook because I normally don't do it on Facebook, but um, you can also get my newsletter right here by signing up my newsletter. All right, so let me just show you what we're going to be painting. So there's the scene we're going to be painting, a little night scene. Let me put my glasses back on. And um, Oh, and also every Thursday, or yeah, every Thursday when I do them on Thursdays, I have a craft beer of that day and night. And so today we're doing the UFO Main Blueberry, a refreshing, crisp, and subtly sweet blueberry ale so we're gonna do that tonight or tonight yep um so merry christmas everybody hope you had a great day hope you got all the presents you wanted and um cheers everybody cheers ah very good so we're gonna start out with um like we normally do we work wet in the wet and i hope you like the hat <laughs> thanks judy <laughs> And if you, um, in the comment section, I have them up there. If you want to um, ask me questions or something while I'm painting this. Oh my gosh, my, my brush, I didn't clean it. And so it's really hard. Uh, from last Wednesday. I did one on Wednesday. I do, normally do them on Wednesdays. So I'm kind of rinsing on my brush here. Holy smokes, look at that thing. I uh, should have washed that out. Okay, so, oh my gosh. <laughs> didn't wash any of these out. So, what did you do normally... And um, for my Thursday night people, I put a um, towel on my desktop, you know, so that I don't have to have paper towels. So I just go like this, I rub it on the on the towel, and then I wash the towel, I bleach them. And so I'll be doing that. And so I'm going to start out here with the lightest light, um, which is the sky, which is going to be the light, the sun's going down. And there's this nice sun, if you see in the picture up here in that corner, up left right hand corner, you'll see there's a sun that's poking through there. I'm going to show you how to do that. But first thing you're going to do is um, wet the entire sky. And boy, look at that. My brush was so dirty from last week's. Okay, anyway, watch me. You can go to my YouTube channel. I did a lantern, a picture of a lantern. And so I'm going to go over here. And I'm just going to wet the surface. Wet the surface. And by the way, if anybody who takes my class on McHenry um, at, the, at the studio, at Lucy's at the studio, um, this week we're not having class. And it's the 26th, so this Saturday, is that tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow we're not having class. So don't go there. We're not going to, she's not open. I think she's up north. And um, so we're not going to be there. So go paint at home or paint tonight after this. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this part white. Right there where the sun is, that's where I, my light source. And so right there, I'm going to keep that light. And so we're just going to go around that with a little bit of yellow. The area where I want to have it shining through, I want that little bit of yellow right there. If anybody else is watching, just let me know um, in the comments. And if you have questions, again, put them up there and I will answer them live. 
I won't stop and type anything because I can't. <laughs> it should take about, I would say, about maybe half an hour at the most. We're going to do this quick. We're going to do this nice and quick. I just felt like I needed to paint this one. It was a beautiful shot. Aaron from up north um, she gave me this picture. And the beer comes from Timmy up north also. <laughs> and so um, this is this is their walk, actually, their walk. And right when the sun went down. And so I thought it was such a great shot. And so we're just going to go in here and go from a uh, yellow. And we're going to go to the blue sky. Now, blue and yellow, you got to remember, they make green. And it's kind of a green haze, very light green haze. But you don't want to mix those two together. The, um, the blues and the yellows. And actually, I use a yellow and an orange. But you don't want to mix the blues together. You're going to let them float together on their own. And it'll have a light haze of like a... Um, it's kind of a greenish, but it's not going to be as green as you think. It's not, uh, if you do, if you mix it, it's going to be really bright. And so I don't mix it. I let them mix themselves. So I go in with a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple. And um, we're going to go up here because it's wet already. And for anybody who's ever watched me on YouTube, I do a wet into wet to get things soft. So we're going to go in here. And, um... We're just going to keep on going with the blues. I put a little bit of lavender in there too. And um, it's going to dry to about 20% lighter. So what I have to do is make sure I have enough pigment in my brush. And I'm using a Compose, Compose Blue. Um, it goes down here. And you notice I'm going to let it run together on the bottom here, the blue into the yellow. I'm not going to force it. I'm just going to let it run by itself and make it very light a blue. Where in the top part up here I'm gonna make it a little bit darker and a little bit more violet and um, boy it's reflecting a lot here isn't it so I'm gonna hold it up a little bit so you see that not the reflections and you see more of the color and now I gotta take and put wet it like right here just gonna wet it and so that the blue mixes into the yellow by itself I don't want to mix it because um, then it, it, it becomes too green if I let it kind of mix themselves together, here I'm pushing them a little bit together, they won't be as green um, because they're just very light and it's just going to blend in there on its own. And you'll see that in a second how it's going to be just blending. And I'm just going to put a little bit more on top here again. So you're going to go down here, maybe make it a little bit farther down. And like I said, it can be green because that's what would happen in nature anyways. And in the picture you see a whole slight haze of... Um, of that green in the sky because that's what happens when yellow and blue mix together. Those colors make, make um, green. So if you don't have green in your in your palette, just mix your blue and yellow. I mix my my greens with my cranacridum gold and my blues. And so now that's going to be the top part with the with this with the um, sky. And so I probably should have brought it down just slightly, but I don't know if I go over that. No, let's see. To go a little bit more. As long as your brush is the same wetness as the surface, you're fine. You can just sit there and let it bleed in there. A little bit more violet. And again, control the amount of pigment you have on your brush compared to the water you have. The amount of pigment you have will stop it from running too far. And so now we're going to go down here in the bottom. And there is going to be some, the sun is going to be really hot right here really hot and so I'm gonna leave a little bit of light coming coming through this area and I'm gonna put a little bit of the it should have been a little bit more orange glow right by the trees which I will put in yet I'm gonna put like an orange glow on the top of the trees I'll do that when this is dry so I can re-wet it again and I'll put a little orange glow and then the orange glow will also go into the side of the hill a little bit so I'm gonna take a little bit of orange now and on the side of the hill where the Sun would maybe hit the side of the hill I'm just gonna put a little bit of orange on these parts and um, also right here in this corner, there's a little bit of orange on the snow. You can kind of see it in the photo in the upper left corner. Hopefully you can see that a little bit in your screen. I'm going to put a little bit of that in here just to get that the top of the trees a little bit. And then, of course, the people here, the four family members are going on a snowshoeing trip right here down the, down the side of the hill. They're going to be um, have a little bit of silhouette to them, but they're also going to have a little bit of, of the sunlight on them. All right, so there we go. We got a little bit of the orange sitting there. And now this is pretty much right where I first started. It's pretty dry already. 
it's pretty hot in my house and so we're just gonna um let's see we're gonna go with the i'll go with the flat half inch brush and let's see anybody watching out there i think judy and friendly so cool 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 and um have to do this right i've got to click on there hold on one second i just want to say oh there we go now i can see myself painting <laughs> so there we go all right so none of you are watching me that's cool so then prompt two thing i just wanted to show so welcome the nine of you who are watching and so now we're going to go and do the background work myself forward and so the background i'm going to make pretty dark which i normally wouldn't do as dark as but because i want to really make that light shine through there I'm going to take like a violety blue, maybe a little bit of brownish color. And um, uh, actually, let me first wet it a little bit. I'm just thinking I've got to wet a little bit here so that I can get that orange glow on the edge of it. I'm going to make, I want a soft edge, so I might as well wet it a little bit. Anytime you wet something, that means that you're going to get a soft edge. So any of you who are out there watching who are not artists and want to know how to get soft edges or have never done watercolor, you get your soft edges by wetting the surface and then letting the paint um, just bleed into that wetness. And then the thicker the amount of paint you use, then it just doesn't bleed that far. So now I'm getting the, I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter yellow as I get toward the sun here, because the sun is gonna be right there, right there. And so I'm gonna make that a little bit brighter yellow and it goes to an orange. And as it goes away, it'll get darker. And so I'm going here and I'm just gonna make the tops of these trees orange and then we'll make them green of course and dark silhouetted shapes after that so now we go with the dark hey marianne hey cheryl hey maura hi irene thanks for stopping by <laughs> man i got gonna think it's all that thursday or a wednesday <laughs> so here we go we're gonna do a little bit of purple I know the trees are green back there, but because the sky is so blue, I'm going to start out with the blue, the dark blue, and then put green into that dark blue. And here I'm going to make pine trees, and it is wet up here, so I'm going to get soft edges, right? And so I'm going to come down, and this is a, a Prussian blue, Prussian blue I have here, maybe a little bit of connectum gold to make it green, a little bit of purple to just make it dark. And of course, as I'm going towards... I'm going to make the tops of these trees soft edge, but I'm making them look like pine trees because some of them are. Some of them are tops of birch trees. And if I look at the picture when I do this big area, I know I normally would have done the dark big area of blue, but I want to get this dark up here, the light at top of the orange. So I thought I'd do that right now while I'm, because it's not going to be affecting my other parts that much. So I thought I'd just get in there and do that right now. Normally I would just do the, the background light, but because this, that's my dark part of my composition, I'm intending to do this right now. Every every painting has so many different ways you could do it, and you know this one. I just I'm working back to front, and it just so happens that this background is dark contrasty, which normally they are not dark and contrasty, but this one is. Move my table. Cheers, everybody. So UFO Marie, our main blueberry, a fresh and crisp blueberry ale. Mm. Ah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> and so, and somebody wanted to see my hat. Here's my hat. See my beautiful hat? Isn't it great? <laughs> so it's actually getting kind of hot in here. <laughs> so let's see. Let me have to take it off for a little bit. Oh, I'm sweating. <laughs> so we're going to get in here. And so uh, before it dries, I got to get, when I get closer to the sun, this dark turns into more of an orange. And then it gets almost pure orange when it gets right to the sun because it's it's so bright that it, it's going to make the trees and the trees in the background look like they're orange because it's just that's the way it looks when you're looking and staring into the sun which you shouldn't be doing but <laughs> so see how it goes from there and it just gets lighter and lighter orange i'm gonna keep that circle right there and later on i'll even soften that but i'm also gonna make the trees that color but now i'm gonna go with the orange and then on this side, start out with a little bit darker. And this is the background. There's going to be trees in front of that that are really dark. So um, I'm starting to dry on this side too, so I have to re-wet it again a little bit. 
and then go back to my dark bluish bluish purple green <laughs> and so see, I'm just gonna go back to the dark and um, I'm kind of leaving this alone because I am gonna put the trees in there I'm gonna be putting the pine trees that are in front and um, let me show you a picture a closer up so this is the picture closer up see there's pine trees right right in the halfway point there's trees so you see that glow in the middle that right glow so that glow is what I'm trying to get here and on the side here we're just going to go to a blue take the blue that you already have in your palette and so there's a tree the tops of the trees a little bit and then this got a little bit too dark right there so what do you do you take your brush and you kind of wipe it away and also it got too dark so i'm going to take the orange and mix in the orange to that because i'm going to do trees in front of that that will be in front of the background all right so now it's got the glow already almost and so now we do the big parts now we do the whole thing as you can see it goes from a light back there light blue and as it comes forward it gets like a darker blue and blues and purples whatever you use in the sky you use for that part and so again with my big brush i'm going to kind of do this from the background in sections uh, following the hill basically so back back here i'm going to go a little bit lighter blue go right over the people because they're going to be silhouetted and if, even if i do have to get them lighter i would make, make them opaque and make them light with an opaque and i as i get to this area right here i'm going to leave that white i'm going to go in here and then just get my blue mix of blue together i have to get closer to the people or to the sun i sit there and um Sun so going down and I just make that blue. I can even make the tops of the hills a little bit lighter. Maybe make the soft edge right there. You can see that this area right here, even in the picture, is a little bit lighter and it's going to be a little bit more orange reflecting or warmth for reflecting in that in that area. So maybe I'll put a little bit of orange, yellow orange type of color in here. Again, remember what happens when the blue and the yellow go together. You're going to make a um you are going to make a green so you don't want a green snow and you don't want yellow snow <laughs> you want orange snow it's not that because the dogs were out there no it's not why they're yellow it's because of sun <laughs> and so we're going to go in here and just make a little bit of the orange so if you use the orange it makes it a little bit better and if you use an orange with not that much yellow in it um using i use an orange brilliant orange has no yellow there's not as much yellow into it so it's a little bit more forgiving when you when you mix the blue with it if you mix the yellow orange then then you get the green a little bit more that's how come i have those two oranges on my palette one is more orange one is more yellow orange all right now the whole foreground is going to be a nice crisp blue so compost not compost compose blue and a little bit of peacock here i think oh i went right over my orange there okay it's oh well too late now <laughs> so a little bit of purple in that so i put a little lavender a little bit of purple in that blue there's a little peacock a little bit composed blue and so we're going in here and there's a you can see in the photo there's a little bit of a ledge right here we'll make that a little bit darker and again as you get up here just get more wet with your brush and it, it'll make it lighter because there's not as much pigment so it's the same blue I'm using down there, but if I use more water, it makes it so that it gets lighter, right? Because more water in your in a color with a lot of pigment, it'll be darker with more pigment. And actually, I, I even went across here quick, so I'm getting sparkle. So this will be a sparkle that I get off the side of the um, of the snow. So I'm just letting that sparkle. Oh, I just put blue there. What the heck? I wanted that to be light, so I'm just gonna rub that out a little bit. And now I'm gonna go in with a little bit thicker, darker blue. I use a little ultramarine this is ultramarine which is a little bit red in it so i'm going to go in here and i'll be my dark my dark color and then there's the lighter parts so you can see what i'm doing is i'm um if you use a little bit thicker and i'm rubbing off some of the some of the orange from underneath the paper i'm using today is some um, stonehenge aqua legion makes it legion papers and um now if you're looking at the photo all this has to come down and darker because it, otherwise you're not going to get the brightness of this if you see how dark it is the whole thing so everything's got to come down in tone i just looked up at the screen and i just saw hey everybody merry christmas everybody 
<laughs> hey Renee, you also take your other hat on and off the temperature. <laughs> yes, I was getting a little warm my hat. So here we go. We're gonna put this in a little bit darker. Everything's gotta be a little bit darker. And again, watercolor's gotta remember that your painting, your watercolor dries about twenty percent lighter than what you put on. And so what you put on is always gonna be lighter by twenty percent lighter. And so now I'm also doing the shadows right away. And this looks okay right now, but again, like I said, if it, if it, get, if it dries 20% lighter, then it's going to be too light. So i got to make it 20% darker. So if your pigment looks right while it's wet, it's wrong because it's going to dry lighter. Now, some of these parts are going to be okay to keep lighter, and it's not like that in the photograph, but I'm just going to use my own you know, judgment on what I want to have a little bit darker, what I want a little bit lighter. And so in here, I'm just going to make that side of that hill a little bit. This is a little bit of a ledge right here. And then we're going to go up this thing and go quickly across it because then you're going to get texture if, and it's dry area. So I get a little texture on there. And here we go a little darker. I'm going to put a little bit of the um, shadows going across from these trees later on. They're going to be shadows, right? So I look at how I can make little shadows crossing, the, crossing over the snow. And that's how do I do that? I do that with a lot of paint with no water on my brush. So if I take my brush and put it onto a paper towel or on my, on my blanket here, <laughs> my, my towel, it's like a blanket. Um, I put like over there. I get rid of the water, but I leave the paint on top of there. And so, like these trees right here, and the people are going to cast shadows, right? And so, I just real quickly take a lot of pigment. This is wet still, so it'll just shine. Um, it'll give these little little shadows coming from the trees, and I can do those later too. I a couple of them I'm going to do later. So just soften that a little bit. So right now, you almost feel it already, right? Are you feeling it? <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, cheers, everybody. Cheers if you're feeling it. Oh, that's good. <laughs> nice um, Christmas afternoon, evening. Yeah, let's see who else is up here. Let's see. Oh, we got about 12 of you in there now. Well, thanks, guys, for showing up. Thanks for watching. <laughs> so now we're going to... Um, we're looking at this and what kind of do next? I have to make this a little bit darker and then we're going to go right into the trees. Let's go over that a little bit quick. All right, let's go to our trees. So the trees are going to be hard edged and there's many different ways of doing texture for trees. I like to use just the brush and drawing and there's other people who like to do it with, um, you can, there's special brushes, like there's a fan brushes and there's all kinds of different ways. I just use a regular round brush and I start out with the pine tree needles and the trees. And I start out with the top and I try to make sure I get a really nice point to them. And um, I kind of shake a little bit. And so I'm so nervous right now. See how, how it just a shaking helps right now? See how nervous? Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Uh, here we go. And so you just got to put it in there. And um, Or if you're older and you do have shake a little bit, hey, this is the perfect thing for you then. I've had a couple of people in my classes who have, you know, they're older and they shake and I think, but you have a great technique then. I do. I'm not sure if any of you have seen the, some of the um, paintings I've done where you show motion in your painting. And that's for the, basically just going like this a lot. So if you have a shake, so you can do that kind of style too very easily. So here I'm, I'm pushing my brush backwards up into it. I'm pushing down like this. I just did this last Wednesday to show pine trees. And so let me show you up closer how I do this. So I'm going to take, what I do is I push, I push the brush this way. And I bend the bristles so it kind of bends the bristles in that direction and kind of gives you a um, look of pine needles. And so it's one way of doing the pine needles and they can look very cool. And basically you're going to go really dark with these. And so you can get a little bit of brown, a little bit of green, a little bit of warmth. Because I want to put a little bit of orange in there too because it's reflecting from the sky, right? So we're just going to put, I, I like to put the trunk in first a little bit also. And I can also put the orange in the side later. I put the branches, a couple of branches here and there. And so. Uh, Mary asked if this can be recorded. Yes, it will be recorded. It'll be on Facebook forever. And then I'm going to transfer it over to YouTube. So it'll be on YouTube also later on. So yes, and this was not a paint along that I had planned. I just was um, sitting here and my friend had... Um, sent me this picture and it just I, I it, 
it sung and I was like, yeah, I got to paint this. And so I thought, hey, hey, what the heck? I might as well show everybody else how I'm going to paint it. So yes, it will be recorded. And the photo will be right there in the in the video. I can't post this. This is not my photo. This is my friend's photo. And I would have to ask her first if you guys can use it. <laughs> Which I think she said she would, but let me just make sure. And so we're going to come down here. And we're going to put up here. And poking, poking at it. And, and now these two trees kind of come together. And so what I like to, um, what I notice a lot of people do when they're doing trees is they're not like the Christmas trees that you see. And so if we're doing Christmas trees, I know a lot of people do this in my classes. They have, you know, the line and then what's on one side and then they do on the other side, other side, other side. So it's always like this, you know, it's just basically, and it gets like this type of thing. Well, that's not too bad, but what you want to do is think that there's also branches in the middle. So when you're doing that, um, you can start out like this and then there are branches in the middle and then they come out and some of them come out, some of them come this way and don't make it the exact same on both sides like this. And they get bigger, you know, they vary. And then in the middle, there's also branches pointing at you, towards you. So it's more of a make the branch and then do the, the pine needles on top of that branch. And then also the trunk and cover the trunk sometimes. So it's that type of thing. Too many of you, like you're putting up a Christmas tree and you hang the little things on there and you're putting one, another, the next row. And I think that's because that's the way they make those trees. <laughs> so that's the way you guys paint them. So make sure you kind of... A little, a little variety in there. <clears throat> so here we go. Let me go again here on this side. And this is probably because now we're in the detail. So this takes a little bit longer because, you know, you these big washes are easy because you're doing a big wash. Now here we're a little bit a little smaller. So we have to take time, you know, and it's makes it make, it make it look good. Make this trunk come down and look at them going right past the line <laughs> didn't miss i missed it i missed the line going down so you know i'm gonna make a double tree here make another one right next to it i missed it see <laughs> must be this blueberry ale <laughs> i can't hit the line anymore <laughs> so um don't paint and don't paint and drink at the same time no <laughs> no actually it actually makes your painting better usually <laughs> it loosens you up a little bit so cheers again everybody cheers 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 Here we go, put this in here. And depending how um, detailed you get, you can, um, depending how detailed you want to get, you can draw it all in to perfection or you can just fake a lot of it, which I'm doing right here. I'm just faking a lot of the tree. I'm not even looking at the photo. I'm just kind of making up the tree. I had to draw in a little bit to where some of the branches were, but I'm kind of making up the tree as I go along here. And again, it's all up to you. And the most important part of your painting is going to be the drawing anyway. So if you want a good painting and you want it to look a certain way, it's all in a drawing. Once you learn the techniques of watercolor, it's not that hard. What's hard is making sure that your watercolor is drawing. The drawing underneath that you're going to watercolor is what you're going to be looking for to make really nice looking. If it's drawn wrong, it's just not going to look right. It's not going to look good. Got to draw it right. I don't care if you even trace the photograph. It's your photograph. Go ahead and trace it. And um, just make sure you have a good drawing. So important. And you can be the best watercolors, but if you don't have anything drawn down there right, it's just going to be not looking great. It'll be a nice washes and everything, but it's not going to look like what you want it to look like. So now I'm taking, I'm going to take a little bit of opaque, and I'm going to put on the side of the trunks here. I'm going to put a little bit of the yellow and the yellow on the side in here. I'm just going to put a little bit of opaque on the side of the trees. Just so they can see like it's reflecting off the side of there kind of like um i think bob ross kind of does that with a with his big happy brush happy little brushes and happy little skies and happy little everything happy little trees so those are happy little trees right there happy little posts of the things so here we're going to put a little bit of foliage down there a little bit of, of the things going on there so now i'm going to go a little bit darker on top of that again you can have different layers of a tree too a lot of people tend to always make their trees look flat because why because everything is the exact same value so i know it's silhouetted but that doesn't mean that some of the things are a little bit darker in front 
and a little bit lighter behind because behind is going to be a little bit lighter because it's closer to the sun. So don't forget that even though it may be silhouetted, make something that's in, in the front, which is the front, darker if it's in the silhouette shape. And then on the opposite side, I could even put it in, I'm going to do this, watch this. I'm going to put in a few orange branches because over here, and that, that would say that they're behind. They're behind the tree because the tree is glowing from behind. It's That's where it's glowing. It's not glowing in front where you're at because you're not, it's not the morning and not coming up on this side. All right, so I'm going to just rub that in there a little bit with my finger. All right, so we got a little couple of branches here that are orange. <coughs> okay, so let's see. And now we're going to go into these little trees. We're not too far. far along. We're pretty, pretty far along. We're not too much longer. I forgot when I even started this. <laughs> How long did I didn't give myself a time limit on this. I just... Um, I just thought since I'm going to paint it, I might as well show you guys. It's kind of fun painting in front of you guys, and so it's not by myself. And that way I can teach you too a little bit. And so this is going to be kind of a wispy thing. Let me show you how to do some wispy branches. And so what I do is I take like a, they do have the, what you call brushes, the, um, um, oh, the fan brushes. But I like to just take this kind of quarter inch brush. And what I do is I keep it pretty dry and I real lightly wisp branches is very dry it's not very wet and I just kind of take and put and wisp a few branches in there um, with this light see it's just a light graze in here I'm just real lightly wisping branches because there's so many branches there that you can't see them all you can't I mean, you can't draw them all you just you just wisp it in there and it'll look like hundreds of hundreds of little branches coming up there right so that's done look at that boom and then of course I'm gonna take a little bit of white with maybe a little bit of orange or yellow and do the side of the tree so you can see the reflection so you can kind of see the tree the side of the tree right and that's for maybe a um what do you call it a birch tree so it'd be white anyway see all right so now these trees in the back here now these are a little bit more difficult because i've got to watch it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my small round brush number eight and by the way you can get these brushes on my website at beckerart.net and get a set of six for 60 bucks i uh, know christmas is over but when you take that thing back that you didn't want, get the money and <laughs> go buy my brushes. There you go. So um, here we go with the orange. And so I'm gonna start with orange and that's what I'm gonna do with the trees that are right by the sun. And um, so these are gonna be pine and they're done just like that tree is, but now I'm doing with orange. And the ones that are right in front of it, you're not even gonna do because it's so bright that they're being blurred out. And then I'm going to take bright red or bright orange and then just do those branches right against there. And the trunk of the tree is going to be bright orange. And the branches are going to be bright orange because right here it's so bright that it's, it's, it's taking and just making it disappear. Because when you look in the sun, you can't see anything. So it's like blurred, right? So that's what you're doing here. I'm blurring the tree branches and just making it look like the sun is so bright in there. And I can also soften the edges by putting a little water on there. So some of it I'm just going to blend with my finger. And as it goes away from that area, it's going to get darker. So I get darker orange and I even get into like a, a terracotta type color. But still, I'm not going to dark brown or a, a dark blue or green because this area can't do it there because right here it is still very bright. The sun is so bright right there and it's shining through those trees. So you have to use the red first. And then depending on how fast you want it to change to the trees, that's how, you know, how bright it is. You can um, change it slowly or you can make it right away where it gets dark right away. So you decide, I'm going to make it on the trunks of the trees and the picture got dark. So I'm going to make the trunks of the trees dark right away. And then down here, I'm just going to go in with a little bit darker, darker color. It's a fun technique to learn how to do this. And I know there's a lot of um, oil painters don't like to paint into the sun and I'm not sure I was out with the plein air painters up north here and there they were like hesitant to paint into the sun and I always thought Man, that's a that's the best is to paint into the sun because then you get all this beautiful look of the sun just shining through there and blurring things and it gives kind of a neat effect too so here I'm doing with the um, dark here And so now on this side, see how I get the right to dark? And then I go darker and darker. And I actually want to get so dark that it's almost black. 
because then it, it looks like it's really bright the sun because without the darks the, the sun doesn't look bright though the only person that could do that to make their painting all look really light and still make it look like it's really intense colors were Soroya. Soroya could do those beaches beach scenes with um boy such brightness um and, and such lightness everything was so light but he made it look like it was so bright that you you know you're like when you're squinting your eyes that's how bright he made it look and so now on, a, on the ground you're going to get shadows and you're also going to get you know a lot of times they have like little right close to the trees there's always a little bit of the weeds though this is a really fine golf course here so i don't think there's too many weeds <laughs> all right so going across here and so see how you get that shining light going right through the middle there um renee asked me what i'm drinking i'm drinking a ufo from uh i think it's new hampshire brewery and this is a main blueberry ufo um, blueberry and it's very good <laughs> very delicious cheers everybody and so now again we're going to go over here on this side and do the trees on this side and this is a, the example i was just showing with the trees so if anybody who's just coming in um go back in the video and you'll see that i showed you how to do these trees without making them look like um christmas trees that you put up on your house you make it more looking like trees that are out in nature because trees out in nature don't look as perfect you know you make some of the branches like they broke off or or they're tilting a little bit and so i'm going to do this one closer right there i had I forgot that one and put that one more in orange maybe a dark red this time this one's a little bit farther away so a little bit red more red on this one and then mix the red and the green together see how the red just it looks like right there it really got bright right there and so right away i'm gonna mix a little bit of dark in there too and then put the trunk in dark and here i'm tapping you see how i'm tapping I'm shaking, so I'm so nervous. Again, if you're nervous, you see how great that is? <laughs> okay, I'm not too nervous, but if you were nervous, it's good. All right, so there we have that part. And now the little snowshoers right here. I'm going to put them in. And actually, there's also these little trail of footprints. And you know what? I'm going to put those in first. I would like to keep the people always for last. So I'm going to put the, I'm going to take the same color blue. And so there's a little bit, they're not footprints, they're um, snowshoe prints. So they're a little bit longer. And they kind of, since there's a bunch of them, we're going to kind of just put them here and there. I'm taking the same color I started with and just make it a little bit darker. Uh, Mary asked what the names and brands of the oranges are. The orange is, um, I use Holbein paints for one. If anybody watches me, I always use Holbein paints. And the reason I use Holbein paints is because they don't dry out. They don't have ox skull in them. And so they don't, like this set, I just, I, I never have to, it never dries out. And so I just keep on adding to it. And if it's not wet after a week or something, if I'm not using it, which really happens, but if it does, um, they don't dry out. And they stay nice and rubbery. And as soon as I add a little bit of water to them, they um, rejuvenate instantly. And the orange I use is called Brilliant Orange, and this one's called Permanent Yellow Orange, or Orange Yellow. And, um, and then I got Scarlet Lake for my red. And so here now we're putting in the little trails of the, of the footprints, or the snow, snowshoe prints. And then they get smaller and smaller, and as they go back, and then... I, I do this horizontally, even though a lot, a lot of people would do this like they're going in that direction. No, anything you do on a, in an area that's going back, you do horizontally with water reflections, with everything, do it horizontally because if I do a line like this, it makes it look flat. So don't make your round dots, uh, even if it's in the picture, don't do it. Do it, do the roundness like this, horizontal. It'll lay flat a little bit better. So see, I'm just making it, going across it, and um, there's the footprints, snowshoe prints. And then I will put a little bit of um, darkness over this because I was still a little, I kind of like, I wanted that to be a little bit of a, of a little bit of a, um, like a little ledge right there. And I did that so that um, it looks different from this side too a little bit. And so 
uh, I get a little, there's a lot of weight on this side. And so if I put a little weight on this side, and the people will be the, the extra weight that I have on this side too. Composition is all about the weight of your painting. It's like on a scale. And does it look like it's balanced? And does it have a nice feel to it? That's what it is. And a lot of times, you know, you can do a lot of different things. And there's a lot of different ways of doing composition. But I say to my students, just look at it. Does it look balanced? And does it look good? If, there's, if it's something off and you look at it in a mirror, you can pretty much tell that um, like this side is too, not enough stuff on there. So then put a little bit more on this side. And um, so it's a little bit more balanced. And these people now are gonna be these little gestures of people. I'm not gonna go in there and like put everything on them that you can tell what everything is. I'm just gonna basically go in and um, give them maybe different color. Like maybe they have different color jackets. And I usually start out with the torso you start with the torso, the arm, whatever you're doing. And again, this is all about drawing. If you do it, if you drew it right, I know one of them had a pink coat. Somebody else has a red coat, I think. And um, so we're gonna, but the thing is these are silhouetted. So um, a lot of times it's gonna be dark. So it'll be a dark red, even though it's pink, it would be a dark red. And then, so there's the people's torso. Then you gotta put in their, their legs, and usually their pants, and then um, I do little dots for their heads, and I'm making it pretty small so that um, you know it's just they're there, they're in a distance. It's not a portrait of them. It's just that there's people in it, and it makes it always nice to have people in your pictures. And they uh, put their snowshoes on a little bit longer. They're not skiing. There's no shoeing, so we're gonna put this in there like this. Maybe one leg forward, one leg back. Then the arm with the pole, and I'll put a little pole in there. The poles make it real nice and thin. And then here we'll put two legs on this one. And so see how they're all just sitting there and looking at the beautiful sun going down. And it was probably so cold, they probably want to get back in and get a nice toasty, nice toasty drink when they get back. Or a cold UFO blueberry, right? <laughs> and I know they have it because Timmy is the one who gave me this. And that's one of the people in there is Timmy. So I know he has that blueberry. And so now a little bit of more reflection again or shadows coming away from them. It's, um, now I'm going to put a little bit brighter color in there, so just to make it a little bit, now here's a really bright red shirt, or coat I mean, and a hat, a real bright red hat, just to, all right, I think that's almost about it. So if you have any questions or anything, just put them up there, I can always answer afterwards. And um, it'll be up here for a while yet. It'll be actually up there forever because I never take it down from Facebook. So once it's up there on Facebook, it'll be there forever probably, right? So a couple more. Um, this one seems a little big right here. I don't like this one. This is a little bit too big. I'm going to push that back a little bit. And then this one you don't see enough and make this a little bit darker. I like to look at it through the um, video because if I look on the video, then I can see things. So I look at it on my screen as it's um, recording. And I can look instead of pushing it away like from a distance. So a lot of times what you want to do is look at it from a distance. So I think that's pretty much about it, right? I think we have enough trees in there. And um, yep, if I see anything else, I'll put it in there and I'll, you'll see it on, I'll probably post it on my regular site or on, um, which I, I sell paintings every day. I put a painting, up, painting of the day up every day um, on my Facebook page. And on my website, there's a painting of the day. And it's for sale. And right now, I'm selling them really half price for the pandemic so I can keep my business open. But here we go. We're going to, and this one will probably be up there someday. Not right away, because I like to look at it for a little bit. And so let me take the tape off and show you how it worked out. And it will be done for today. UFO unfiltered offering. Is that what it is? Refreshing crisp and <laughs> uh, a su subtle, subtle, sweet blueberry ale. I think it comes from New Hampshire. 
the brewery, or I think it's from New Hampshire, the brewery. So here we go. Look at that nice edge. The reason I put tape on there is to get the nice edge. And a lot of people will not put tape on there, which is fine too. I just like to have it so that when I get done, it has like this nice little mat on it already, even though it doesn't have a mat on it. And then, so we'll put this like this. Put this in this corner right here. And there you go, guys. I hope you guys had a great uh, Christmas and you got everything that you were hoping for. <laughs> And uh, oh my hat, my hat, I have a hat, I need my hat. <laughs> Let's see, here we go. My hat, I gotta put my hat on again. There we go. So, <laughs> so thanks guys for watching. Um, watch me every Thursday. Um, usually, well, next, next, it's gonna be next Wednesday that I'm gonna be doing this. Um, on Wednesday, and go to my website at on Tuesday. On Tuesday, you'll find out what we're painting on Thursday. So, if you want to paint along, just grab the picture and um, and then we'll be painting together. We can paint it afterwards too, like I said. Let me see if there's any more questions. Thanks, Dave. My Christmas demo, yeah, thanks, <laughs> Judy. My Christmas demo for you guys. So if you want to paint along, or if you want to paint this one, just take it off the um, take it off this um, off this video, and we'll see you on on Wednesday. See you on Wednesday. I'm not sure what we're painting yet, but we'll see you Wednesday, and um, have a good rest of the evening. See you later, guys. Cheers, everybody. Let me see. I gotta show you what it is. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye.